What is more important at the beginning? Have a great variety of inks or pens? Okay. I think this is a really great question, especially for you know new people who are getting into fountain pens. Um, a lot of times the pens can be a big draw, right? Like the pens are like the, the car, you know, and the ink is like, I don't know, the paint on the car or something. I don't know, that's a terrible analogy. Don't go with that one. I'm um, just being honest. So my brain's a little foggy. I'm not at my, my peak today, but you're gonna get it anyway, because this is what we do here. Um, so, from my background, I did not have a lot of fountain pen experience um, coming into the fountain pen world. Of course, I thought fountain pens were very appealing, um, but I also had no money. So the idea of buying a $700 pen was, I didn't even want to see it. I was like, I don't even want to hear about this pen because I can't have it. So why do I even want to know about it? Because I just it's just telling me something that I'm gonna get excited about that I can't have. So I never got into any of the expensive pens in the beginning. I would look into things like the Lamy's, like the Lamy All-Stars and Vistas were aspirational for me in the beginning. Um, I think some of the first pens I bought, I bought a Kueco Classic Sport, I bought a Lamy Joy, it's a Pelican Script, so I was very much shopping in that $10 to $30 price range, pretty hard. Um, of course the Metropolitan wasn't back out back then when I first got into it, otherwise you can believe I would have gotten all over that one. Um, but I, I was able to get a good writing experience. Um, from a few different pens, and I bought you know three to five pens, and I was pretty happy with what I had at the time. But the ink was really what got me excited, and honestly, that's that's you know important part of Goulet history here. We didn't sell fountain pens for the first year of our business; only sold ink and paper, S strictly for fountain pens. But we didn't sell any pens. Um, part of that was because I had been making my own pens, and I transitioned out of that. But a lot of it was, I was still new to the hobby, I didn't have a lot of money to invest in the business, and I didn't have uh, a breadth of experience in fountain pens themselves, so in order to learn my way into the hobby, I learned paper and ink. So I guess the answer to this question would be, I think ink is the better way to go, because that's what I did. So I guess I would be a hypocrite if I said anything else, but it's gonna be different for everybody. You could be coming from a different place. You know, if you have more experience with pens or if you have some nicer fountain pens that were passed on to you, you know, maybe you're not a 25 year old with a kid who's trying to get his business off the ground after three years of having no income, that would probably put you in a different position than I was in. <laughs> maybe you'd have, maybe you could afford like more than a $20 pen ever and you could get into some pens before you get into inks. But the thing that I liked about inks, personally, was I found that if you had a pen that you liked well enough, you know, a pen is a pen is a pen, right? That's why I have 500 of them. But, you know, a pen will write, and it'll do different things, and yes, but a pen is a vehicle, really. It's the ink on the page that is kind of the mark that's left behind. And there's a lot of different types of pens, for sure, and you can get different writing experiences with them. Um, but the ink I found is the best bang for the buck in terms of changing up your writing experience. And you know, for example, like I'll use Lamy as an example. It's a relatively inexpensive pen. I can get a different nib and get a different writing experience with that Lamy, but that nib is gonna cost me $13.50. That's a whole bottle of ink. Or if I go ink samples, I can get like 10 or 11 ink samples for the cost of that nib, just the replacement nib. So I can really get a wide writing experience with a limited selection of pens and a wider range of inks. And you know, you can, even if you're just sticking with ink samples, unless you're writing a lot, ink samples will go a pretty decent mileage, right? So I, th what I kind of like to ascribe to is you get a, f a few reliable pens. This is why I talk about like fountain pens for newbies like the Metropolitan, the Safari, Gin House, you know, things like that that are relatively inexpensive. You get a couple of those if you're really if you're really kind of wanting to get into the hobby. If you're very passive and like not even sure if fountain pens are for me, get one pen, one ink, use the cartridge that comes with the pen, whatever, and just try it or just borrow it from somebody you know that uses fountain pens. Don't dive deep into it. But if you're like pretty sold on it and you know you want to get into it kind of for the long term, get, you know, three to five pens that are pretty good. You know, solid value that you like and you want to carry around. And then I would, I would then pause a bit on the pens 
and get into ink because you can get a wide variety of ink, different colors, different brands. You can try samples. There's different properties you can get into. You can get into permanent, fast drying, UV, all kinds of different aspects of ink. You can get shimmering inks. You know, there's all kinds of things you can experiment with with ink. And then that you can, and then you can take the ink and different inks will perform differently in different pens. And then the color looks different depending on the nib size that you're writing with. And there's a lot of experience that you can gain with fountain pens just by trying a lot of different inks. So that's what I found. And I really didn't experiment much with pens that first kind of that first year that I was into fountain pens, even as a retailer, because I didn't sell them. I was doing paper ink. I was just really trying to learn those. Then once I started getting into pens, okay, it started to take on. I think if you try and get a lot of both pens and inks at the same time, it can be a little overwhelming. You know, it's kind of good. Most people I know too will get a bunch of pens and kind of limit their ink and just, you know, do with pens and just use the same inks that they like in the pens. Or they'll have a limited selection of pens and they'll get go crazy on the inks unless they're just really out of control like me. And they go full bore on both eventually. But to do that from the get-go is pretty overwhelming. It's nice to pick kind of one avenue. And the ink is a more affordable way to go, so I would kind of lean that way because you can get, you can extend your experience out a little further. Unless you've got the means, then what the heck, go for the pens. Um, but I think if you go maybe three to five pens that are pretty decent, and then you get into inks, especially samples, full bottles, you can do that, but I would only commit full bottles for things that you really kind of know that you want. Go samples, which is why I started the whole sampling thing. Um, Rachel and I, back in the day, I wanted to try a bunch of inks, and even as a retailer buying them wholesale, I was like, I can't afford all these different models. So I, we started samples. That's a lot of why I was like, if I want to try samples, I'm sure other people do too. Boom, samples. Um, so I would say probably get like 20 to 40 samples. You know, that's a lot of ink. It's a lot of ink for sure. It's a lot of cleaning out your pens and stuff, but of course now you know how to do that. Um, but uh, try 20 to 40 samples or so, and then you'll start to learn what you really like. Colors that you really like, certain colors that really blow your mind, you wanna get full bottles of them, great. Ones that perform really well in all the different pens you have. And then you can kind of swing back towards pens and focusing on kind of getting into some of the next level pens. And then getting into the next level pens with inks that you've now kind of narrowed down that you know you really like then it starts to get really fun. You start to really feel like you're getting somewhere, you're honing in on what it is that you really like, that you really connect with, that fits your writing style. And then, you know, that's that's probably about the first year. For, for most people, I would say, that's about the first year of your writing experience. And you know, six to 12 months, something like that. Now, these are all general timelines, but I think that's a pretty good progression right there. It's not too aggressive. You get to spend enough time with every ink, with every pen to really get to know what you like. And then you can kind of go nuts from there. Um, me personally, I focused on the inks for about the first year, and then I started getting into pens. And then I would kind of swing back and forth between pens and ink, and now it's kind of both. <laughs> but uh, that's that's my that's my recommendation for you if you're just getting into it.